What great missile. Time absolutely flies. That first hour, roasted by. one three hundred oh one eleven seventy is the way to have your say text. Oh four five seven seven three six seven three six. Joel, a missile just on the reigning or re-signing, I think they're saying here, of Schuster by Manly for a reported 800000 How can they also pay Tommy Turbo 1.1, DC 1.2, Brooks 700, Jakey Turbo <laughs> 950, Tommy Talao, Jackson Talao, <laughs> and the list goes on. Um, so Bulldog Bob is just suggesting that a certain particular wide brim hat has uh, moved north. Yes, Brooks? You needed like a little visor and one of those machines like punching in all the numbers there. That what? was a bit... Green visor? Yeah, the green visor, <laughs> the fear and loathing in Las Vegas style. Visor, wow, that's a long text. I'll tell you one of the reasons I love Thursdays, because we get to catch up with this bloke. Uh, it is the run home with Joel and Fletch for Hyundai Tucson and Anytime Fitness, but joining us now, the host of Morning Glory, Matty Johns, heading to Chemist Warehouse for great savings every day. G'day, Matthew. Hello, Joel. Hey, Missile. Hey, Matty. Future, Mate. is this the future New South Wales coach that we're talking to today, Joel? Please. Oh. SOS. We tried SOS. To, we tried to get Jonesy yesterday, Fletcher and I. AJ. <laughs> Alan Jones. Yeah. Oh, that's a disgrace. Well, I don't know about that. I don't know about that. I don't know. Uh, ready for me. <laughs> we tried to get the great man in time. Oh, God. Yes. Yeah. What, remember when he got the Balmain Tigers job and they yeah. said, what's your plan? He said, we're going to explore the edges. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I, the podcast is there. It's a beauty. It's He'd a beauty. be loving the cricket at the moment, uh, Shug. Who are you saying? We've got... Uh, oh, no. Whoa, 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 whoa. Uh, okay. Tom I'm saving Root you from yourself. Uh, I'm saving you from yourself. Uh, now, I'll, Maddie, tell you what, I'll tell you what, Joel. I, I, Trish uh, and I were at the Star mm. a couple of months ago and had a drink with uh, Miss Oles. Uh, fiance? Oh, no. Rose. Girlfriend. 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 Oh, yeah. Man, what a champion. Yeah, yeah, she goes, all right. She's a very lucky girl. Pinches herself every day. Oh, yeah. Well, uh... <laughs> <laughs> no, very nice girl. Awesome. Yeah. So when is the day? Is that sort of looming? What's the overs and unders market set at? Uh, <laughs> I don't know. A couple yeah. of years. <laughs> yeah, okay. We spoke about this yesterday on our family podcast. The boys were asking about the engagement, Trish and I. Trish actually went and lay by a ring and told me that uh, uh, she goes, I've just lay by a ring. <laughs> uh, when you're going to ask me, uh, yeah. just... Uh, and then she used to say all the time, have you got the ring yet? And oh, I was like, oh, uh, mate, getting pressured. 800 yeah. bucks, mind you. Tell you what. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. it's, it's meant to be three, three months salary. Is that right? Is that yeah. still the go? Yeah, it was three oh, minutes well, salary I, for him. Well, at the time, well, at the time, I was, what was my time? I, I wrote about this in, in a Telegraph article tomorrow. They asked me to write an article just about the old days of negotiations during the Super League War, when um, you know, in relation to the top one hundred rich list. Because, I, as I said in the article, there would have been some interesting conversations at training this week at some of the sides. When you get the right back row, who finds out the left side back row oh, is getting yeah. twice yeah. as much as he, all those yeah. sort of things. Yeah. But yeah. I would, yeah, some of the, the funny stories, because when Super League was going on, like only the very elite few really had managers. Uh, the only chief had a manager at the Knights. Uh, his brother Mark was his manager. All the rest were just flying blind. So I was on, at the end of the 93 season, I'd had a good year. And so I signed on a two-year deal with the Knights for wait for it. Twelve thousand dollars a year. Oh. Yeah, I felt like I was one of the Packers. Like I, was, <laughs> I thought I was flying until I went to Country Origin camp, and found myself literally sitting in between Ricky Stewart and Lazo, and they were having a conversation across my face about what they were being paid or what they were about to ask for. We're talking four hundreds, five hundreds, six hundreds, and then Lazo goes to me. So, what are they paying you, blokes, at Newcastle? <laughs> now, I wasn't going to say twelve because at that point. <laughs> So I just said, oh, listen, boys, I, I, I was always taught that it's rude to talk about money, but let's yeah. just say I'm going okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, hey, just on that, um, I tell you, the boys from Batuta Advocate, geez, they did a good job. Have you yeah. seen it, Missile? I saw the Hillsong one. I haven't seen the Super League one yet, but I yeah, saw Big Dell's in it. Yeah, who else have they got in I'll it? i tell you who else is in it. Yeah. I'll yeah. tell you who else is in it. Uh, she who... Uh, arranges her own engagement ring, Matthew. Is that right? The great she is. Trish Johns. Yes, because co uh, contractually, I, I they asked me to do it and I couldn't contractually. Mm. But I said, look, my wife knows all the stories. And so they said, yeah, it'd be good to get uh, a perspective from from a partner. And so, yeah, she was talking about it, it was... Uh, 
incredible time. Do you want to hear it, mate? This is a beautiful. I'll, t- I'll tell you an, a, another story of negotiations, right? Let's just, we had a player who had retired, right? And let's just call him, we'll call him Norm, okay? Yeah. So, so Norm, as most recently retired players will attest to, they were cursing their timing when they retired, when the Super League war happened. So Norm just rolls up at training one day and says, hey, boys, um, think about making a comeback. And we're like, okay. So he goes up to the coach, Malcolm, really has he on to him. Malcolm sort of reluctantly agrees. He said, mate, you're going to have to work your way off the bench, from off the bench in reserve grade through if you think you're going to play first grade. Norm goes, yeah, yeah, sweet. So armed with that, he immediately jumps in the car, drives down to Phillips Street, walks into the negotiation office where Bozo was there, the great, late great Bob Fulton, and says, hey, Bozo, how you going? What do you got for me? And Bozo goes, hey, Norm. <laughs> Mate, I thought you'd retired two years ago. <laughs> and he said, yeah, I, I, I did, but I'm, I'm in the midst of a comeback. And Bozo goes, oh, right, okay. Oh, right, I'll well, head us 25 grand sound. And Norm goes, well, 60 sounds better. So he gave him 60 and Norm never made a comeback. <laughs> oh, yes, Norm. Yes, Norm. Oh, that's good. Just on the player managers, Matty, um, it always interests me. So when your young boys are coming through and they're getting close to, to grade and the like, and it's probably time to, to sign with a manager, how did you pick which manager to go with? Did you go with your own manager or did you help them find one? There was a re- there's a really uh, great writer up in Newcastle called Neil Jamison. He wrote Craig Johnston's book, Walk Alone, great local identity. He was a great journalist, and he just said to me, um, there's an old Newcastle bloke called John Fordham. He won't steer you wrong. And so, um, yeah, we signed up with Fordo. But we were naive, Missile. The first, when the Super League war happened, the player managers, it was a frenzy because you know, it had most of the players didn't have a player manager. So we were in the the night when it broke. We're driving down, we're driving down. We're pl- we're playing the Balmain Tigers the next day at Parramatta, Parramatta Stadium. On the Saturday, we're driving down, and we're reading these billboards everywhere about this Rebel League. By the time we hit Parramatta, it was evident this thing's happening. Where he is going? What are the Knights going to do? And uh, mate, me and Andrew were rooming together, uh, happier times. And uh, <laughs> and mate, there were player managers banging on our door and um, like the club was saying, club officials saying, don't let them in, don't let them in. And then we had one guy who rang the room and said, listen, um, uh, I represent the Super League. Unless you sign with me, you won't get a contract. And we're like, holy hell. We said, well, where are you? And he said, look out your window. Oh. I'm the guy <laughs> waving across the road there. Like it was just, That's it was like crazy. they were cowboys. And it was unbelievable. It was, it was the wild west. Any of those and, blokes um, still around today doing the same? Oh yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So you had to make a lot of them, and so they would they would say to you, "Listen, I'm an exclusive agent to the Super League. If you hang up the phone now, you, you, there's a chance your career could be over." Oh. And then what you do on the Tuesday when, as a team, we went down to listen to what the ARL had to say. Mate, same managers hanging in there uh, talking to the ARL with a couple of blokes. You know, um, so it was just it was catch and kill your own. Fletch and I both were managed by during our playing career at Chimesy, and we still uh, yep. great great mates with Chimes. And, and and the story goes that this is all unfolding, and the ARL wanted some kind of representation. So to secure players outside the ARL doors, and Bozo pops his head out, and Chimesy's there, who's reporting as a journo. And they yeah. go, what are you doing, Chimes? Oh, I'm just reporting. He said, no, you're not. We need a manager. So that's how his career started. You're kidding. And yeah. as a manager, got dragged in into that. But so, so, the, the Batuta yeah. boys tell a story on social media uh, with Hello Sport. Yeah. That these two Kiwi boys, one bloke comes in and they've totally got – so it's one of Rupert Murdoch's suit guys who's interviewing the player, has no idea who the players are, and dishes out this huge check – for which they think it's his player. And it's just this some knockabout sort of <laughs> A-grade player. And then the captain turns up. So this guy's done the Harold Holt with this check and couldn't cash it quick enough. But it was just bizarre times, Matty, wasn't it? Yeah, it was. Like I was at a, um, a speaking gig at Port Macquarie a couple of weeks ago for the great Billy Millard, and it was Gus and I. And James Graham interviewed us on stage. And James Graham just goes, I know nothing about the Super League, why it started and... And so we, Gus and I were just sort of talking about different stories. And of course, Gus was in the thick of it. And he told a story about uh, when he signed myself and Andrew. And once we put pen to paper, he just went, right, boy, is there anything else I can do for you? And I said, 
listen to my good mates out there uh, from Cessnock, lifelong mate Billy Peden. Now, Billy would end up going to, you know, win two grand finals. Yeah. But at that point, he was sort of a late developer in his mid-20s who hadn't played first grade. I said, mate, can you just look after Billy for me? Gus goes, yeah, 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 send him in. So I said, Billy, Gus wants to see you. So Billy walks in, and but, you know, Billy's a real country guy. So anyway, he says, uh, Gus goes, how you going, Billy? Yeah, good. So what are you after, Billy? He said, Gus, all I want to do is buy a ute. He goes, how much are ute, utes, Billy? He said, oh, about 25 grand. He pulls out the check and goes, there you go, Billy. So I buy two utes. Oh, yes. <laughs> what a <laughs> What a champion too, Billy. What about the story, uh, which uh, I think Trish tells the story, or the Batuta boys tell the story. It's you got to see this missile. It's really good yarn, and it could have been. It could have been in the same conversation. You could have had Brian Henderson, Roger Clemson, Peter Overton, and the Chief Harrigan. Yeah. What what happened there, Matty? Uh, about where? The, yes, well, Chief, when he signed, Chief, we all hadn't signed. Uh, for anybody, all the players, but the ARL really got the Chief. Uh, the Super League did, first of all. Chief, they, they made Chief make a decision, first of all. And and uh, when he, he agreed to terms, but then Mark Harrigan goes, no, there's one more thing, and said to the head of Channel 9 at the time, David Leckie, <laughs> after his career, he wants a five-year deal at Channel 9, he wants to read the news. <laughs> and David Leckie goes, you're kidding, aren't you? There is no way in the world... Anyway, left the office, rang Kerry Packer. Oh, well, Packer rang him and said, what's going on, Lecky? Have you signed Harrigan? And he said, yeah, but there's a sticking point. He said, mate, he wants to read the news when he's retired. <laughs> and he said, mate, if he's not reading the news, he said, you're fired. Just go and sign <laughs> yeah. it. And that, that obviously launched the, the huge career he had with the footy show. Wow. Yeah. That was his brother, yeah, it wasn't did. it? It was. It yeah. was his brother, Mark. Wow. Um, Mark played for Newtown in the late 80s. Uh, oh, sorry, sorry. Played for Newtown in the... Uh, the late 70s into the right, I think he might have been in the squad when they uh, were booted out of the comp. But there's just so much, like, so many amazing stories. Like, Gus was good enough for Andrew and I to give us a one hour, uh, sorry, a 24 hour get out clause. Because the Super League, towards the end, like, we always thought it was about our football ability. But they were like, you blokes don't understand. The ARL of Sign Chief, right? but we can build a Super League club around you two blokes. We need Newcastle. So we just went, oh, okay, you know, and when we went and signed, all of our teammates went in and signed, and um, and uh, they weren't given a 24-hour clause to get out. Gus gave it to us because he goes, I know how much money is it for going, and it doesn't sit right with me to do this, but don't tell anyone. We want. To, I'll say that Matthew insisted on getting a 24-hour clause. He said, "But do not tell the Packers. I'll scare yeah. me alive." Oh. So, of course, Super League finds out within 20 minutes. We get a clause, and it just keeps going up and up and up and up and up. The last hour, me and Joey are sitting again, happier times, <laughs> having, <laughs> our, having our shrimp fry and hibachi yeah. chicken and cheese oh. toasted sizzler. And the bloke comes out and says, Matty, there's a bloke on the phone for you in the kitchen. And I'm like, what? So I walk in there, pick it up, and it's the great Ken Cowley, who was oh. the boss of news, and just said, explained it to me. He said, Matty, you don't realise this has got nothing to do with your football ability. He said, we just, we just need a Newcastle side uh, and we can build it around you and Joey. He said, you, he said, look, just name any price you want. It doesn't matter. And I said, Ken, the problem I got, mate, is that when I went and signed, Joey and I, all our mates, lifelong mates, have followed us in and signed, and they haven't got to get out clause. And he said, uh, Matt, the money will pay. He said, mate, you can buy a whole new bunch of friends. <laughs> and I said, can you? I said, can I appreciate? I just can't do it. Mm. And he was like, mate, he was awesome. He just said, mate, he said, mate, he said, yeah, I really, I, he said, I respect that, and I wish you all the best with your career. And miss so was that was the end. The, 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 the Newcastle piece was so critical because the most rusted on rugby league fans were from Newcastle. And then know. ironically, this big sort of uh, Game of Thrones, they're all trying to conquer this particular piece of the puzzle. And then when it come to the grand finals, the Broncos Sharks grand final of Super League was hardly memorable. Yeah. And then the ARL come out with this, ironically, won by the Knights, that famous grand final. Is that what, what yeah. ended... The battle was it? Was it, that a it, part of it? That they said um, Neil Whitaker talks about it, Missile. That negotiations were sort of slowly developing, but it was very hard who was holding the whip hand going mm. to the negotiating table for compromise. And he said, 
the, AR, the that grand final gave the negotiations uh, or gave the ARL a lot of power in negotiation and really yeah really pulled the compromise uh, f a lot earlier than it would have been. Mate, it was it was incredible time. It was unbelievable. Like hard to explain. It was like literally at one point, hour by hour, things were changing. Like we we were at training, and the Super League. Some of the boys who signed with the Super League said, "You hear what the, hear what's happened, boys? Is it back the wrong horse? Because the Super League's just signed the New Zealand and the Great Britain Rugby League. So the ARL has no one to play against. And we're like, what? So then we're at training. We finish, I ring Gus and say, mate, is this true? He said, yeah, but just hang on the line, there's something else coming. Then it came out that they'd flown over there and they they might have signed the New Zealand and the Great Britain Rugby League, but then the ARL was signing the best players. Uh -huh. And it was just it was just back and forth. It, it was, um, yeah, incredible, mate, just an incredible time. They should make a movie about it. They, they really should. It, it'd be... Better than yeah, that warning, uh, Doco, special. hopefully. Oh, God. God. Oh, my God. That was like pantomime. You know, what did you think of it? Like, Just, but they did the close-up on his fingers. So they, they showed him walking the bowl, um, Joel, yeah. and they, they go into a close-up on his fingers. He's releasing the ball in an off-spinning motion. Oh, no. So they haven't even got the, like, oh, no. just so amateur. Okay. I just couldn't, I just, I don't know. Like, you know, I just, I just found it to have like have the character which is supposed to be warning narrating mm. i just went man that doesn't i, I just yeah, felt so sorry for the family hey maddie yeah. just away from all of that so just the, the reese walsh situation and and, yep. and part of me the kid's only 20 and fletch has been big on this like he's only 20 he's a kid yeah. absolute baby yep part of me sort of thinks long term this year like thinking premierships is a little gift for the broncos the fact that he misses this big washing machine which is another origin you know, you don't see too many 20-year-olds have a gold in 31 weeks. He's forced to sit yeah. down for three weeks. Is there any goodness in this for the Broncos, re the Reese Wall situation? Could be. Could be, Joel. As you said, like, going through the first Origin campaign, you see a lot of young players come out the back of it and they're really, they're worn down. Uh, so, yeah, absolutely could be. Um, and you see with Reese, like, you know, wait, he is just, I, I, I love him. He He's... Mate, he is a he's such a star. I love his swagger and everything, but what happened? It just went it just went over the top. And that but that happens with young guys, right? Mm. I'm not excusing what he said. What he said to the referee was absolutely wrong and probably lucky it was only three weeks. But yeah, um, look, here's the thing about the Broncos. I just think this game this weekend is such a huge game for the Broncos because when I watched Kevy Walters in the post-match press conference, Kevy was really emotional and really stinging. And mm. I thought to myself, man, this feels like more than just a loss. Yeah, 100%. Now, mm. in round 20 last season, Broncos are flying. Mate. Now, now, last week was round 17. This is how late the, the Broncos season fell apart last year. Round 20, they have a shock loss against the Tigers. And in that game, really ill-disciplined game, and in that game, Pat Carrigan has a long suspension for a hip drop. They get a shock loss, round 17 against the Titans, really undisciplined. Reese Walsh gets a three-week suspension. I'll tell you what, on first look at the Pat Carrigan one on David Feeder, I thought to myself, oh, my God, and I reckon Kevy would have as well. Oh, yeah. It was really close. So I think, like Kevy, the similarities of where they're placed at the moment, it is not lost on Kevy. So they've got a monster game this week. Regardless, forget about where they're sitting on the, on the table. Just for them, this is a really big game. And guess who they're up against? Wayne's Dolphins. All right? You just you can't make the timing up. Dolphins absolutely have to win. Dolphins have lost three in a row, and they've been terrible the last three weeks. Wayne will have coached the pants off them this week. They will be sky high. And I think it'll be, I think it'll be a, a, just a cracking game. I think it'll be one to remember. Yeah, 42,000 capacity at the Gabba. It's a sellout. So that's another thing. You're contending with a different oval. There's enough, you know, no Flegler, mate. no Ricky, no mm. Walsh. There's excuses it's there it. for them I to tell win, you what, isn't it? mate, that you can smell the upset. Mm, okay. Uh, Matty, morning glory tomorrow. You've got the show tonight. Uh, how are we shaping up for both? We're going, mate, we're, look, Joel, we're flying. you got no idea, mate. We're flying. <laughs> so much good stuff. Movie of the Week tomorrow is a classic. We've got Die Hard. 
We've got ten to ones. We're going to take. We're going to talk. You know, a lot about the Broncos and where their place. Of course, coming out of tonight, Ben Hunt will continue to be to be a mm. big story. A lot to talk about, fellas. Good on you, mate. Matty Johns. Uh, all thanks to Chemist Warehouse. We'll catch you soon, Matty. Good on you, lads. Good on you, boys. See you, Missile. You hit him with anything, Missile. He's just got the. He, he's just got this untapped brain that's got it all just filed away. What about the new star in the family, Trish? Trish, yeah. Yeah. You've got to watch this. It's a really good show. That's that's Rose, uh, my girlfriend's favourite character on the Matthew Johns podcast. Really? Loves Trish. Yeah, she's cheering. Listens to the show just for Trish. Yep. Uh, And does terrifically well in Batuta Advocate Presents. We had the the boys on a couple of times. Was that just before your time then? You must have been fresh off the back of... No, what Super happened? League. No, what happened was so the club were given a hundred thousand just because they had no time to think. They said hundred thousand dollars, go and sign up your your best five juniors. Yeah. So it was all just thrown at them, and so they said, okay, somebody had signed off. Okay, we'll give Kane twenty, uh, Lee Murphy twenty, uh, Lance Thompson twenty, and Warren Carney twenty, and there was another player. Give them twenty, and. Through Some, the dragons, at the no. Time. Well, the man, whoever was managing uh, the late Lance Thompson said, "No, he's clearly the best player, Lance." So Lance ended up getting eighty, and we all got five each. Oh. <laughs> yeah, so that's how that. So initially we were supposed to get twenty each, but it ended up eighty going to Lance, wow. who turned up the next day in this bright green Hyundai. What was it called? Uh, Hyundai Elantra. <laughs> yeah, meanwhile, we're still catching the bus there. But anyway, um, 1300 01 1170. You can run into Chemist Warehouse to get half price off the Synovus vitamin range. Excludes bulk sizes. Uh, as we said, Morning Glory tomorrow, 9 o'clock, every Friday on SEN. You can catch the Morning Glory show on the SEN League podcast channel as well. The run home with Joel and the missile.